Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. In today's video, we're back on the test server because in my previous videos about the update, I said that I didn't see anything to do with the extra abilities that the heroes get. Every hero in the game actually gets an extra ability. All that happened was I had to scroll down to see the abilities and not just the stats. So we're going to go through some of my favorites, which is awesome. Um, also, people have been picking up that I've been forgetting to do the random giveaway draw uh, the summon so I, I get excited in these give in these uh, update videos and I just forget to do it so this video is going to be a $20 giveaway um, be subscribed leave a comment you're in the draw happy days and that's pretty much all there is to it all the legally details will be in the bottom but we'll do the draw in a couple days and uh, and good luck to everyone anyway let's get into it <laughs> Okay, so the part I missed, I, I had to scroll down. To be fair, I had to scroll down. So when you look at a hero and you look at the exclusive furniture and you click on it, then you scroll down. There's abilities. They Every hero has an ability. You can also click the information button and go to it here. So this completely changes like, I want to say everything. I don't want to be dramatic about it, but it changes a lot because there's going to be a lot of testing that can be done. Uh, once this, especially once this goes onto global server, and I feel like metas will probably shift because because of it. I don't know exactly. I've got a few noted down. I've actually got like twelve noted down that I really liked when I read through them all. Um, but yeah, I feel like people are going to find new strategies for a lot of stuff. Um, there's some things for boss fights, some things that I think will change PVE, just grinding campaign, and, and some things that I think will change PvP and all that sort of stuff. So. Let's just go through a few of the ones that I noticed and I noted down because they looked interesting. So, first one I'm going to look at is Athalia. Uh, let's jump down here. Every time Athalia's allies, excluding Athalia, use their ultimate ability, the damage of their normal attacks is increased by 15% until the end of the battle. This ability can be stacked two times. Um, every time they use it, it'll be attack be increased by 20%. I mean, normal attack damage increased by 20%, stacked up to four times. Uh, that that The reason I got excited about this one is because of Gwyneth. I'm like, she's all about the auto attacks. If she's going to ulting increase her attack, that's that's pretty sweet. Uh, like, I like that. Um, I can't think of who else on the spot is going to really benefit from the, the, the normal attacks, but... Uh, Gwyneth for sure. That's one of them. That's what got me excited about that one. Uh, and if you want to check these out and you don't want to wait till it comes to global, I do have the link on how to get to the test server and check them out. Otherwise, hopefully maybe um, afkarena.net or afk.guide will have them listed up there and you can go look it out. up. If they do have it up there, I'll leave a link to it in the description. I haven't quite checked yet. So that is that. Uh, this one looks interesting from Taylene. Uh, basically when she's in her fireball, so after she dies, she deals AOE damage and heals off of that AOE damage, which means she's going to be dealing more damage in general, and also she's going to revive quicker, so I feel like it just makes Taylene even better. It's not completely busted, but it just looked pretty solid. Um, the Wukong one was interesting, because I know a lot of people have Wukong, obviously, because he's very buildable. Um, basically, with his one, when he goes into his splits into his monkeys, he's going to gain energy while he's not on the battlefield because that's what happens. He he disappears. The clones come out. Um, he's going to gain energy, uh, 60 energy, energy points per second up to a maximum of 600, which is pretty decent. And also he's going to recover his health while in that state. So that's pretty cool for Wukong. Uh, whose was a really weird one? Aziz one, I think there's a typo. Unless he really has something to do with Kaz. While using the ability Feeble Mind, Kaz receives 25% less damage. I'm assuming that's meant to be his is. Just had to show that one there because it didn't really make too much sense to me. Uh, Belinda, basically her ultimate, if there's only one enemy, will deal 30% more. I think it was 30% more damage. Let's go into it and actually find out. Um, when Belinda deals damage to an enemy, their crit resistance is reduced by 35 points for three seconds okay that's that but obviously the first bit of it uh when it's used on only one enemy the damage dealt is increased by 30 percent that's going to make her even better for riz where she was also decent i still don't think that's going to make her overtake uh Soros, uh just because Soros does so so much damage um 
The Estrilda got a little one. I'm not going to go into her, actually. It wasn't that amazing. I didn't find Lucius too amazing. None of these. Gwyneth didn't have a great one, unfortunately. Uh, I can't remember Rosalines. Who else am I going to look at? The Maulers had some really nice ones. The Maulers actually had some really nice ones. And I'm sorry if I missed one that you guys reckon looks sick. It was just like, I looked through every one of them and I'm trying to remember all of them. Um, Totem Dudes looked decent. Uh, not game breaking, but let's just go in and have a look at it. It's fun looking at all this stuff and coming up with ideas. Um, but his Voodoo Blessing, which is his ultimate... Uh, heals more and summons two more totems so it's like he's just gonna spam totems which I think will be like with the other changes to him I, I don't know I'm curious to see how totem dude rolls so that's him uh, who else Scrag had an interesting one so Scrag I can see people maybe building in especially in heroes of Asperia and stuff like that where you've got seven teams like towards the pointy end I can see him getting teams built around him um, all allied heroes within the enemy half of the battlefield have their attack ratings increased by 20% and also receive 25% less damage from enemy attacks um, and then they recover 100 energy points every three seconds while in the enemy's half of the battlefield so I feel like you could make a big uh, a big assassin team that just goes over there and uh, and just gets all the bonuses. I feel like it, there could be something cool in that. Um, my MVP pick. So this is this one's going to be my absolute MVP pick for the abilities. Just based on purely reading it, nothing else. Um, just through hope of this hero is pretty average. And Tundra's not that great late game. She's a really good like early early game carry. Like she just self heals and all that stuff. But she get becomes trash towards late game. I think this could make her actually very viable. I could be wrong, but I hope they've used this as a chance to balance her out. And Tandra receives 40% less damage from enemies that are out of range of her knockdown ability. So normally she's only got one or two people in range of that, so she's going to be taking 40% less damage from everyone else, and then the people that are in range of it are normally going to be getting knocked down anyway and stunned, and you know she's going to be mitigating that damage. And then the next one, if Antandra loses a total of 110% of her max health, so like she loses 20%, gets healed to full, loses another 90%, that's pretty much how it works. Her attack rating is increased by 45% and she recovers 50 energy points per second and is also immune to enemy control abilities until the end of the battle. So you get a ton of attack, she gets permanent energy recovery, so she's going to ult a lot. And she's immune to CC. That's pretty cool. Yes, she has to lose 110% total. But I feel like this ties in well with her signature item. And also, she has a lot of self-healing. But um, when Entendra fall health falls below 30%, she activates this ability, allowing herself to recover 10% of her max health per second um, over 30 seconds. This ability may be used once per battle. But that goes up to 20% per second. So... If she, like, I just feel like if she doesn't get completely one shot and go 100 to dead, and she has a little, just, like, just a little bit of time to recover, I feel like she could be a pretty big weapon. I feel like she could be pretty decent. Um, she, like, she's got that AoE, that's the mark one. Where's the knockdown? So she's got the AoE knockdown which heals her massively. She's got that which he the signature item which heals, and then she's got this exclusive furniture where she takes 40% less dam damage from enemies that are out of range. So she's just got just flat damage mitigation there. And then she gains all that attack and energy and immune to CC. I think that's my pick for most improved from these abilities. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but that is one I'm absolutely pumped to see how it works. It just got me excited when I looked at that. Um, who else had some good ones? Let me just check my list and I'll be back. Okay, so next up is Sophia. Sophia is just one that, you know, she's already good, so I wanted to check out if she got a buff, and she did. So uh, Spectral Disruption, which is the pyramid, gets an extended duration, but also if it's still up, her ultimate is 40% faster for the charge. I mean, she gets that big bomb off faster, which could help. It's just, it's, it's not like the biggest thing ever, but it's a nice little buff to it. Actually, I never checked Ninja Turtle, so we're gonna check him together. Uh, use the ability Shellshock 
grand scorver a shield that is equal, able to mitigate damage equal to 24 percent of his max health for 3.5 seconds shield duration yeah it's, yeah i was hoping he'd be like really cool one but hey it's not, not bad but not the best who else did i have jotted down soros didn't get anything soros is really bad because he was already too strong i'm glad they didn't make him busted uh he receives 10 percent less damage from enemies when using his two attacks 25 percent less damage really doesn't matter because when he's a max signature item, mean, he's just healing that much that it's just completely irrelevant so i'm glad they didn't completely break him and make him overpowered uh there was some interesting ones in the graveborn uh, let's have a look. Oh yeah, another interesting one from Wilders that I thought would be kind of funny is Tassie. So Tassie, if Tassie is attacked within 1.5 seconds of using her teleportation, the ability is instantly triggered again. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm picturing like, I just hope, I just, I just really hope. I don't think they do. I, like I'm 90% sure they don't. If enemies got this in campaign, it would be busted because... I can see just a Tassie, like, you know how enemy campaign Tassies just one-shot your heroes? I can see them just going, boing, 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 everything dead. Especially if, like, you've got, like, a, a Shimmer's ult running, and then the Tassie just keeps taking damage, so she's just pinging around the joint. I, it'd be nuts. I, I'm hoping someone gets some funny footage of Tassie after we get this, uh, and can share it with me, because I think she could be doing some, some crazy stuff. Anyway, moving on from that. Uh, Shamira does gain the, an extra cancel of her other abilities when she uses her ultimate and she gets a bit of CC immunity. Not too bad. Nara's looks pretty fun. I like Nara's too. Um, what do we got? All enemies become terrified for two seconds after Nara successfully kills an enemy hero with her ultimate ability, Butchery. Enemies are unable to attack while terrified and will run away from Nara. <laughs> so basically Nara's just that crazy savage and she just kills someone with her ultimate and everyone gets scared and runs away i i think it's kind of cool but the, the big part of it if the requirements for the butchery abilities high damage multipliers are met the damage will be additionally increased by 450 percent so with my nara that i play with my ascendant one she's always just off killing people with it um if you've got this i think she's going to have no problems executing anyone i think she'll be pretty well fine um, who else do we have? Baden had a very interesting one. Baden had an interesting one to me. So Baden's is... It's this second one that we look at. If Baden receives fatal damage, he consumes one of his phantoms that currently has a higher percentage health than himself and transfers 60% of the phantom's remaining health to himself. This ability can be used six times per battle. So he basically gets six cheat deaths as long as he's got a phantom on the field. That's pretty cool. I... Although I don't know how often you need it because obviously he takes less damage when they're on there. So I I don't know how often that would happen and how important that'll be. But I mean, six cheat deaths ain't bad, I guess. Uh, Odin's one looks busted, but I don't think it'll ever happen. So that's, it's like, if it happened, it would be busted, but it won't is my thing. So every time an enemy uses an ultimate ability, Odin will have his attack rating increased by 3% and damage received reduced by 3% until the end of battle. Uh, the ability effects can be stacked up to 15 times. Once the skill has been stacked 12 times, Odin becomes immune to control abilities. So he gets a massive chunk of attack and a massive chunk of damage reduction, and he gets immune to CC. Um, the effect will apply to another ally hero with the highest combat rating. So him and an ally basically just getting stacking attack and then immunity and damage reduction. The problem is, this isn't going to be good for bosses, because when Odin's in the team against bosses, he basically just resets their um, they want he re resets their energy and doesn't let them use their ultimate. So it's never going to happen. And in normal fights, I just feel like you're not going to get it up to twelve stacks of enemies using. If if your enemy team if the enemy team uses twelve ultimates, uh, n normally your team's dead. So I don't know. We'll have to see. If you, if you put him in a real tanky team, maybe um, like a full sustain team may have an effect. Have to wait and see. Isolde also looked interesting to me. Uh, his attack rating is increased by 1% uh, and it, his attack frequency is increased by 3% until the end of battle every time he loses 1% of his max health. It like it it doesn't say that it's got a stacking limit and he loses health often like this could be cool like he could like i'd be interested to see if he got some nice damage like on a boss fight or something like that just randomly i'd like to see um how high you could actually stack that attack 
I mean, if you go into a Riz battle, Riz puts the burn on him. He's just going to keep losing health. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Uh, and then the effects of the ability of Hypodermic Healing become permanent after his, after this ability has been stacked 45 times and does not need to be manually activated again. I don't know. It was just interesting. I have a whiteboard sitting right here and I accidentally knocked it. Anyway, looks interesting to me. Have to see how he plays. Um, I'm going to have another quick browse. Oh yeah, Ukiyo looked interesting too. Uh, we've, we've probably just about gone through every hero, but hey, I just had to cover the ones I liked. Uh, Ukiyo's attack rating is increased by 6% each time he deals damage to an enemy. Uh, this ability can be stacked up to 6 times. If an enemy dodges, mitigates, or is immune to one of Ukiyo's attacks, he will lose 3 stacks of it. Ability can be stacked 15 times. So, I'm just looking at, like, so it's obviously like a scaling thing. It's like, hit, 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 stack, miss, lose 3 stacks. But if you go 15 times of the 60 of the 6% attack, uh, what's that? 90, 90 an extra 90% attack. I don't know. Maybe for bosses. Maybe for bosses, those who have Ukiyo can test it. And I think that's pretty much everyone that was on my list. Rosaline was on my list, and I can't even remember why. So she's the last one. We are going to have a browser. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, yeah, this one's huge. Like Rosaline. Ooh, if I'm reading this correctly, I don't know if I'm reading it correctly, but as Rosaline is following an ally around the battlefield, she manifests teacups that she throws at the enemy. The ability is triggered once every 2.5 seconds. The effects of this ability are identical to the crazy cookery, crazy crockery ability. Ability triggered once every 0.75 seconds. So she's basically using, the way I read that, that is, she's using this ability as like a different ability, like teacups instead of crockery. I don't know, but she's using it every 0.75 seconds. That's how I read it. Um, and leaving them temporarily stunned. Rosaline will prioritize it. So like, to me, it sounds like it says it's copying this basically. So she's gonna be throwing cups, which stun, but she's gonna be doing it every 0.75 seconds. And also this is the one that deals massive damage. Um, because it deals additional damage equal to 20% of the, the the target's current health. Like, I don't know if it's going to involve all of those or how it's going to work. But it just looks like it could be completely busted if it, if, if the way I'm reading that is correct. It seems like she's going to be use that ability, a duplicate copy of that ability every 0.75 seconds. I don't know. Sounds busted. Probably won't be that because it sounds too busted, but uh, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, those are some of my favorites, which is probably like I probably went through what about ten or fifteen. Still a lot more heroes for you to look at. Like I said, if it's on one of those websites uh, with just a list, I'll leave a link in the description. If not, uh, get on the test server and check it out because it's it's this kind of stuff's fun with theory craft. Anyway, let me know your favorites if you guys have had a look at them. I realized I kept rambling. I'm just cutting myself off here. That is going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.